I want to thank you for for doing this. I know like the scheduling, you know, was like a big issue at first, but I'm glad we could, you know, make it happen. Sure. Because I'm excited for this one. Um, so yeah, so let's just jump right into it. Um, obviously, I, like before each interview, I like to do, you know, some some research on on who I'm, you know, uh, having, you know, speak. How did so you go from from news anchor to mm -hmm. director of public affairs and marketing for? <laughs> Uh, General Mitchell, like that's crazy. Yeah, so I, I was originally in, in radio broadcasting and having a great time. I enjoy broadcasting a lot, but I wanted to look for something different to do because uh, people don't, they're not waiting to get their news on the radio right. anymore. Right. Everything's available on the internet, so they're, they're not waiting for that. So I was starting to feel a, a little um, underutilized, like what, what what is my role here that, mm -hmm. that I'm playing? So. Um, I had the opportunity to work for the County Board of Supervisors, so the Milwaukee County elected officials. And uh, I worked for Board Chairman Lee Holloway at the time, and I got into public relations for the Milwaukee County government. Right. So, um, and around the same time, I was actually training to get my pilot's license because oh, really? just as a hobby, I was interested in flying. Yeah. So uh, I think I got my license like the day before I started working for Milwaukee County wow. at the courthouse. So that was cool. I just always had an interest in aviation and never pursued it as a career at the time, but mm -hmm. I thought it'd be kind of cool to become a pilot. So I saved my money up and took lessons and um, got my license in 2006. And then I worked for the county board until about 2012 when a position opened up at the airport. Mm -hmm. And I applied for it, and with my media background and, and doing public relations for the county board, plus being a pilot, yeah, this is a perfect fit. It was a great fit. Yeah, so I've been here for almost ten years, and uh, I'm I'm loving being able to work in aviation as well as having it as a hobby. So did was like was this something that you knew about like while you were in school? Because obviously you went to school for you know communications and uh, I think it was economics. Yep. All right. Did my research. You definitely did your homework, <laughs> but. Like, was this like something that you knew about? Like, because many, um, you know, like, I guess me specifically, like, I didn't know uh, aviation even had like a management side. I didn't know aviation had anything to it besides flying. You know what I mean? So when you were doing, um, you know, when you were at your news anchor position, you were like starting to understand, okay, maybe this isn't where I'm going to stay for a while. Um, was that like something that was in your in your head already, like an idea, like because you said at the same time you were getting your your private license. Mm -hmm. So were you starting to think about okay, let's try to like mesh these three three things or these two things together, like communication and you know aviation. Well, I, I knew that the county ran both Mitchell and Timmerman airports okay. whenever I started to work at the county, and I thought, well, maybe I could get some experience in public relations and then maybe work at the airport later on, which is how it ended up working right. out. But to go to your earlier question, whenever I was in college and whenever I was in high school, being involved in aviation was not on my radar screen at all. Mm -hmm. I had never been on an airplane until I was just about done with college. Did you take so a discovery flight? Is that how you caught the aviation? No, I, I flew on an airline to California oh, to and visit you're just a friend. Like, hey, let's like, yeah, see so, where this goes. Um, and then whenever I was a reporter, I took a discovery flight, and that's kind of mm. what, what got me started. But um, yeah, I never thought I'd be working in aviation. I, yeah. I didn't know anything about it. I was not interested in, in being on airplanes or anything. And it's just, I was kind of afraid of it, yeah, actually. I was right? like, I, I don't know about this. Right. Like, I've never been on a plane before. And, you know, but then sometimes when you're scared of something, you look into it more and you learn more about it, and then you become interested. And then in you it. get hooked, and then that's yeah. how many people catch the aviation book. Yep. But. So, like we said, you you talked about um, you know how you you caught the aviation bug kind of late, um, but you know you're you're a great pilot. We've flown before. Um, when was it? The flower drop contest. Yep. Yep. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, go watch that video. I did. It's really good. Yeah. Did you I watch like it? What you did with it. Yeah. That was the music first and everything. Flight. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was, was cool. That was a that was a good video. But like you're you're a great pilot, you know. So why did you choose you know this side of the aviation industry compared to you know the airlines? Uh, you know, I never really thought about being a pilot for an airline. I, I just wanted to do it for myself. Okay. Um, and you know, I, I think that I think you know, if you don't have a family, I don't have kids, but I have a wife, mm. and like you know, you do spend a lot of time away from home right. if you're flying exactly, for an airline. Exactly. That's true. 
Um, and it is quite expensive because you have to do a lot more training mm -hmm. to become an airline pilot. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it takes a lot of time, money, effort, dedication to, to become a pilot. Um, if you can get a scholarship, yep. that can certainly help with flight training. Um, but it's but not cheap. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was already, by the time I got involved in aviation, I was already kind of established in, in the marketing right. and public relations side. Okay. So I just thought, well, I'll just stick with this yeah. and, you know, go from there. But, um, but I, I enjoy working at airports, that's for sure. So let's talk about what you do. Like, so let's say somebody who's watching this right now doesn't know anything about public relations, um, public affairs, I mean, or marketing. Like, kind of tell, tell us what you do here at the airport. So my job is to make sure that anyone who comes through this facility has a great experience. I wanna make sure that, that we're getting as many people as possible to, to fly on flights from Milwaukee. The more that, that people have a good experience, the more they'll hopefully fly from the Milwaukee airport mm -hmm. instead of other airports in the region because the more people do that, the more flights we're going to get. The right. airlines will add more flights to more cities if more people board their flights from, right here in right, Milwaukee. Exactly. Okay. So that's ultimately my job is to put as many passengers in airline seats as possible. And so I guess how are you how are you doing that? Just by making sure like, you know, their their time here is pleasant, you know, things run smoothly, or like is it more so like I guess greeting them once they come in or like I guess how do you how do you do it? Uh, well, there's a lot of different different ways. So we, we're heavy on social media. We okay. we have a really good social media presence. We um, work with traditional media outlets in town to, to get coverage so when we have new airlines or new flights coming in mm -hmm. like we have Contour Airlines starting this month with new flights to Indianapolis and Pittsburgh we have uh, JetBlue is coming early next year they have not been at this airport before yeah Sun Country started service here earlier this one. year that was and cool. Spirit started yep. earlier this year so we have a lot of great new service so we have to work with airline or with uh, media outlets to get them to cover that to help us get the word out right. to sell more right exactly tickets. sell more tickets right right and then we also do um, we, we do the news releases we do um, customer service programs so we have volunteers that work at the information desk here in the airport to help people maybe they it's their first time flying and they've right. never been here before we, um, we, we work with elected officials, so both at the, the city, county, state levels to, to help us get the word out. We do newsletters, we do contests, giveaways, we do community events. We were at the Milwaukee Night Market in August oh, yeah. downtown. So there's a lot of different things. We just try to connect with people and let them know that this airport belongs to all of us. Right. This is our airport, it, it, it's our community's airport. And, and we need help from the traveling public to fly from here to, to help us get more, more service. So, I mean, that sounds like it's a lot of different, you know, people and pieces that you need to work with, you know. So, obviously, you know, communication is going to be such a key part about, you know, for your, your job and your role. So, what would you say is, like, the hardest part about, you know, working with so many different people? Well, you know, every day is different. Yeah. And you do have to work with a lot of different folks. It can be difficult whenever passengers don't have a good experience mm -hmm. because people pay money for airline tickets. Sometimes they pay a lot of money and they expect a high level of service when they come through here. And sometimes sometimes it's reasons beyond our control. If the weather's bad and flights are delayed, mm -hmm. people get mad and un unfortunately they, they can get impatient and they, they call us and, and email us or they say things on social media about us that, that yeah. aren't, aren't the best. and. That's probably one of the more frustrating things is everybody here tries their hardest to mm -hmm. make sure that people have a good experience, but sometimes things don't always go as planned and right. we can't control everything. There, there are airlines that right. do business here, there's shops and restaurants and there, there's a lot of different entities involved, but we do try to, to communicate. Right. So we had the Ryder Cup come yeah. through here yeah. recently. And we just reminded all of our business partners here at the airport, like there's gonna be a lot of people coming through. Let's make sure that they have a great right, experience right, so right, that right maybe they'll come back and visit Milwaukee when the Ryder Cup's not going on and maybe they'll go play golf at Whistling Straits right. themselves. Right. So, see, I didn't really think about that. Like, so like the airlines themselves like could mess up, but I guess it really comes down and trickles down to you. You know, they they can blame the airport if something goes wrong right. with the airline, even though we don't have anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. it. It could be an issue that an airline had to delay a flight because of a mechanical issue that needed to be fixed on the plane. Right. But they, they blame the airport. Instead of going to that. the airline, they probably, right. Yeah. 
Okay. It's like some advice that you you think and some skills that you think kind of like helped you, you know, succeed. Because obviously there was, you know, I'm sure the job wasn't handed to you. You earned your position, you know right. what I mean? So what's some, you know, some skill sets um, and traits that you think helped you become, uh, you know, the director of public affairs in the market? The, the two biggest ones are writing and public speaking. Writing, really? Writing is huge it, because you might be writing speeches for mm. the airport director or you, you, you might be writing a news release that needs to go out. So writing is hugely important. And if, if you're a good writer, it, it's hard to find good writers. If, if you're a good writer that, that knows how to write persuasively and you know how to, to write and spell and grammar and all of that mm -hmm. correctly and, and you can do a really nice finished product, you're gonna get really far. And then the other one is public speaking. Right. Uh, you know, that's one of the greatest fears that people have is speaking in front right. of groups. And you don't have that fear. I mean, you know, I mean, you've been, or you know how to translate it into positive well energy. Well, here, when I spoke to the ACE kids, I was like, like shaking. Like, I was like, yeah. okay, guys, like, <laughs> but I mean, I, it was, it kind of like simmered down after. I was like, okay, like, yeah, you know. They but that's the other thing. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. Yeah. So those are by far the biggest. If you're a good writer and you're a good speaker, mm -hmm. then you're going to go far because you know how to work with people. See, that's crazy. Like, like me, I'm thinking like, you know, aviation is just flying the plane, you know what I mean? But like it's it's interesting and, and that's something that I really like enjoy since I've started Left Sea Club is learning about different, you know, the different jobs that are in aviation. Like I never would have thought like being a great writer and a great speaker would translate to, you know, being a great um, aviation uh, like industry employee, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, and I just think that's something that's, that's not really talked about is, you know, how versatile aviation really is. And, uh, when we went on uh, like our, our tour of the airport, one of the coolest things that still is like like mind blowing to me is the the I forgot his name, but like was he the biologist that was on? The oh yeah, the wildlife. Yeah, the wildlife yeah. Uh, expert. He was like mm -hmm. like shooting the cap guns so the birds wouldn't like be in the way of the the uh, the landings and mm -hmm. the takeoffs. Like these are jobs that are out there, you know what I mean? And people don't know about them, so so yeah. I think that's crazy, you know what I mean? Well, and, and thinking about um, public speaking, when when you're even if you're a wildlife biologist or you're a pilot, you're having a talk on the radios to air traffic That's control. True. So you need to be able to speak right. clearly and not be nervous about who might be listening. Right. So it's interesting. That see that's 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 different. It's in touch on it's like um, a big thing is you know like for the people who are, who are watching this or or maybe interested in you know getting in the aviation industry, but they're not really you know interested in the flying. You know, what's some, some advice that uh, that you would give them, uh, you know, in, in terms of like what you've seen and the jobs that you've seen in the aviation industry, you know, being, being top tier? It's interesting because there are so many different kinds of jobs in aviation. It's not all people flying airplanes mm -hmm. and it's not all people fixing or doing mechanics working on airplanes. We, we have accountants that work at the airport. We have engineers. We have, we have skilled trades, so we have plumbers that that are employed by the airport. We have electricians that are employed by the airport. Um, it, but it, when you look at other employers here, there are, there are people who work in the shops and restaurants, just mm -hmm. like shops and restaurants in any other part of the city. There are, we have our own fire departments. We have firefighters. Actually, yeah, I remember yeah. that, that was crazy. We have the wildlife biologists mm -hmm. that work here. So not, not all of the people that are here are totally in aviation. You mm -hmm. know, they're, they're, they can be working in any kind of capacity here. Um, we have maintenance workers that just do general maintenance, painters, any, almost anything you can think of is probably someone is doing that job right. somewhere on the airport property. So I mean, how, how do you get tapped into it though? Like, um, you know, I'm sure, you know, with the internet being so big, obviously, like you can go to Glassdoor or Indeed and, you know, obviously find a list of jobs, you know what I mean? But like aviation is one of those communities and in those fields that, you know, if you know about it, you know about it, but if you don't, you know, you're kind of like excluded, you know what I mean? So what's, what do you think is a good way for people to, you know, let's say there's a, a plumber out there who wants to be, you know, tapped into the, the airport, you know what I mean? What do you think mm -hmm. is a good way to kind of like connect and, and, you know, open that door? There, there's a few different ways. So if you look at the airport itself, so the airport, I'm a county employee. The mm -hmm. airport is owned by the county and there are county employees who right. do certain jobs, but then there are other companies that do business here. Right. 
the, all of the county jobs would be posted on the county's website okay. as they become available, which is county.milwaukee.gov. So that's where all of our maintenance workers, anyone who works in airport operations, anyone who's in the finance or accounting sections, those jobs would all be posted on the county site. Okay. But then each airline has their own Specific hiring. site, okay. Right, and then the companies that run the shops and the restaurants would have their own. Okay. The FAA does the air traffic controllers, those jobs. TSA has their own hiring process. Okay. If you go to the bottom of MitchellAirport.com and scroll down to the bottom, mm -hmm. there's an employment button, and we have a list of links to all of the employers nice. that, okay. that work at this airport. So that's, you see, that's the best way to get tapped in. Like the internet is crazy now, you know what I mean? Yeah. With a few clicks of a button, you can be tapped into people, you know, from all over the world. That's crazy, but on a typical day, um, you know, like what kind of airlines and what kind of people are you like talking to? You know what I mean? As far as the customers or, or the actual airlines? Well, like, I guess customers, it goes both ways because the airlines are your customers. They are. not the same, you know. So I would say like on the airline side, not necessarily on like the civilian side. So how, how do we interact with the airlines themselves? Right, yeah. So there, so we do have, um, think of it kind of in two buckets. There are airline, there are corporate airline people that work at the airline headquarters. Mm -hmm. And then the airline has their own people that work here at this airport. Oh. So for example, Southwest would have, they have a station manager who's in charge of the entire Southwest operation at Milwaukee. He, oh, okay. And then the Southwest has, give or take, 200 employees here so they're all the local Southwest people right but then there are people at Southwest's headquarters in Dallas that we talk to okay so they so Southwest has their own media relations people so let's say that there's something going on with Southwest um, and it could be good news or bad news with Southwest mm -hmm. you know maybe Southwest is carrying some kids some through the Make-A-Wish program mm -hmm. to Disney, for example. There might be media that comes here for that, and we would work with Southwest's corporate media person and say, hey, local media wants to get some footage right. because these kids are going on a Make-A-Wish flight. And then we would work with them and provide access for local media to get there. Or it could be something, um, you know, maybe there's a minor issue with a Southwest flight, the media are calling about it because, you know, there's a, an emergency landing or something, which mm -hmm. usually ends up being a really minor thing, right. but uh, we would work with Southwest media relations on that too, and we would refer local reporters from the local Milwaukee stations, we'd to refer them right. to Southwest so to send talk that traffic about it. To them. Okay. Yeah, so there's, there's things like that that happen, but we also partner with airlines, we partner with Delta on a flight to the North Pole for kids no with life-threatening illnesses. Really? So, yeah, so we not, well, the North Pole is at Signature Flight Support, mm -hmm. and so they get on the plane and taxi over to Signature Flight Support, which is the North Pole. Oh, okay. And that's where Santa Claus is, oh, okay. and they get presents and things okay. like that. So I'm thinking like, <laughs> like, like North it's Pole, North the Pole. North Pole <laughs> for right. the kids. Right. I was like, what? I've never seen that flight. Like, so we we do a lot of things like that. Um, we have a lot of great partners here at the airport with our airline partners, and mm -hmm. and we can do a lot of fun things. Well, with that's them. pretty cool. So, do you think like um, your your degree in? Because really, it sounds like it's a lot of business. You know what I mean. Um, do you think your degree in communication and um, economics like really prepared you for this type of work? I think it did. Uh, you know, originally I was I actually went to college for engineering and then realized I was not. Yeah. I, the engineering stuff was not for me. Oh man. So it, it was not for me. But I know a lot of people, they they're interested and they become great yeah. engineers, electrical engineers or aeronautical engineers, people like that. But yeah, I do think that the, the communications and the economics help, helps me understand the business side of things. Mm -hmm. And obviously the communications are, are key for being in a role like this. Right. And that's again where the writing and speaking yeah. comes in. But yeah, it definitely helped a lot. That's for so sure. So let's say, I mean you can't really, I, I feel like you can't go wrong with a business degree. You know what I mean? But like I feel like it's, I guess for me it's good to hear that, you know, like Let's say I'm in college right now and I don't want to major in business, but I still want to have that same end goal of ending up to, you know, in a place like where you're at. You know, like I, it's, I guess it's comforting to hear like, you know, you can major in 
uh, communication and you know other mm -hmm. things and still get to that end goal you know what I mean so absolutely so I think that's that's you know I guess refreshing you know and you know another area that's that's good is airport operations yeah because that's a, it's a technical role so airport operations has to make sure that, that the airport is operating to FAA standards mm -hmm. they have to do a lot of inspections and follow a lot of rules and regulations right. but a, a number of people that have done that got their start as pilots as private pilots and then they they decided to go to a an aviation school mm -hmm. somewhere and they they pursue a degree in aviation management and that's another good route to follow too right. see but like one thing that I'm not necessarily like a big fan of like here for people um, in like Wisconsin there's not um, many universities or like colleges that have that major that have a right. you know a management major so that's just you know kind of like a downside that you know I've looked at and you know many of them are, are business focused but they don't have that emphasis on airport ops or you know uh, like the management of the you know uh, of the, the airport but yeah I, I agree and you know. there are some people that are working on changing that. yeah yeah there, there are some some groups I, I, I'm not gonna say the name of the university but mm -hmm because they're still working on it and yeah. they haven't announced it, but there is a university in the Milwaukee area that's looking to actually have a full-fledged aviation program. I so mean, I'm hoping that gets going. Because like, to me, it really like, it's it's like the perfect fit. You have General Mitchell right here, you know what I mean? One of the one of the largest airports in, in the Midwest, mm -hmm. you know? And then you have all these uh, smaller, you know, smaller airports that are fairly big, like. Green Bay, Madison, Oshkosh, mm -hmm. um, and honestly, I feel like Wisconsin is an area like that has a lot of rich aviation, um, you know, like like blood in it. You know what I mean? Like with Air Venture being here uh, every year, mm -hmm. like this is like the like the hub of aviation to me. You know what I mean? So Air not Venture. having something like that is yeah, Air Venture is huge. It's huge. I went this year yeah. for the first time. So I don't know if you had a chance to get up to where the all the the flight schools are. There's a section where all the aviation universities mm -hmm. are there, and a lot of the regional airlines that are looking to hire people that have scholarship programs. I mean, anyone from the Milwaukee area, any young person that's even remotely interested in aviation, should go up there yep. because there's some great opportunities. Yep. And and that actually is cool that we have the world's biggest aviation celebration in our state. Right. You know, and it's like, it's like the. I feel like there's just like not a like a direct path. You know what I mean? Like it, it starts from you know having an interest to you know maybe going to uh, Oshkosh, and then now it's like oh well, there's no school here to like you know take me to that next step, and I feel like it just stops there. And then you know people go out in different areas, which is fine, but you know kind of just leaves Milwaukee and Wisconsin like oh okay, no, right. I don't have anybody but right. But yeah, I mean, is there any any last uh, last uh, comments that you want to say? Or I just want to get the know? word out to all, any young person who is watching this or listening to this that there are so many opportunities in this industry for people to to get a career mm -hmm. going in aviation. There's not only do we have the pilot shortage and the mechanic shortage, but I mean, there's a shortage everywhere right. of workers and you can make some really good money working in aviation. That's the thing. That's what people like, some of the people that I've talked to, like some of like, uh, you know, my friends and stuff, they're like, all right, like that's cool and everything, but like I want to make money, you know what I mean? I right. don't want to, you know, be down bad, like, you know, but but I guess without spilling like too much, kind of like talk about how much money is really in this this industry. Well, so if, if you're a pilot, it, we'll just look at pilots. Right. So... And I know that a lot of pilots have to incur some debt mm -hmm. in order to get there. But once you, once you get through, if you can get through that, you can, and if you eventually become a, a pilot of a wide body aircraft, mm -hmm. so a 777 or a 747 or something like that, flying international routes, you can make two or $300,000 a year yeah. doing that. And you get to travel to all these travel amazing to. countries. And if you're a young person of color, or a female, or a female of color, yep. you can rise up really fast because these airlines are really looking to diversify their ranks right. at, at all levels. Yeah. And so you, you can be promoted pretty quickly. So I, I did my flight training at Timmerman in 2006 with, I had a, a female flight instructor 
and she is now flying for UPS. She's flying 767s no way. for UPS, and she'll post these things on Facebook. She'll, she'll be in Germany or Argentina. That's or crazy. She, Hong Kong. She's all over the place. She and she she started at Timmerman, right? Yeah, a lot of airplane, a lot of airline pilots have started at Timmerman. That Hundreds of them have started there. Was it Spring City back then, or was it? It was Grand Air at the time. Oh, okay, it was before Spring City, but that's crazy. Yeah, that's good to hear, though. You know. Because I've like I I got my private at uh, Timmerman too. Yep. You know, and I'm gonna be continuing my training and everything um, at Timmerman. That's true. You know, many people don't know about about this this industry and don't know about um, how versatile aviation really is. You know, they think it's just flying, and you know, once they feel like oh I have a fear of heights, I'm not gonna get in the plane. They kind of close that door to aviation, and really, you know, this really could be like the best thing that you know could happen for your like I guess financial yeah. future. Yeah, you, and you don't have to be a pilot, even if you work for an airline, you don't even have to fly anywhere. You yeah. can just work for the airline and get paid and stay in Milwaukee. But And get the benefits. Like, they do have flight benefits, yeah. so you can fly places for free if yeah. you work for an airline. That's another good one. That's true. But, but yeah, man, I think I think that's it. Okay. Right. Well, th yeah, thanks for uh, for your interest, and let's, let's keep reminding everyone to fly from Milwaukee and... Help us get even more planes coming. Yeah, in I mean, with the with the. Yeah,